Bring in former White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany and former 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Kaylee, start with you. Does the former president look like he's in fighting shape? Yes, I saw a general election candidate tonight, not someone who has a primary on his hands. I saw someone totally focused on winning new voters. I, I mean, I sat back and I tried to view this through the lens of a suburban woman, suburban mom, an independent voter, and I saw someone who reminded me of better times. I saw someone when he said that line, Biden could have just stayed at the beach and the border would have been fine. I saw someone who laid out methodically how he got Mexico to send troops to the border. I saw someone who talked about Nord Stream 2 and how he stopped Nord Stream 2. But for all of the Russia critics out there of former President Trump, Putin didn't invade on his watch. He invaded on Biden's watch. So an independent voter, I think, was won over totally tonight if they watch. And if he keeps up this tone, he will have a tailwind behind him going to November. It wasn't personal. It was measured. And it was geared towards winning and adding to the Republican Party. And this is the winning tone that was effective against Hillary Clinton, Vivek, during those debates back in 2016. Powerful, measured, and precise. Do you think he'll have the discipline to continue with that? Absolutely. And I think the killer actual line of the whole event was when he said that success is my vengeance. That is the message yeah. of national unity. Success is unifying. People are hungry for it, Jesse. We're sick and tired of this culture that penalizes excellence, that penalizes economic growth. Drill, baby, drill, he mentioned it for a reason. That's what drives economic growth in this country. And so I think that is the general election message you're going to hear from President Trump and from the Republican Party this entire year. Success is unifying. Biden ran on a national unity message. He failed to deliver. Now is our opportunity as a Republican Party, and Donald Trump will lead us to get there, to unite this country around the ideals that made America great the first time around. That's exactly how we make America great again. And I'm confident that this can be a Reagan 1980-style landslide if we actually stick to that message. Yeah, and he did talk about the need to swamp the Democrat ballot yeah. harvesting shenanigans. We're going to talk about that later in the show. Kaylee, let's listen to the president talk about what he's looking for in a vice presidential pick. Watch. The first quality has to be somebody that you think will be a good president, because if something should happen, you have to have somebody that's going to be a great president. A lot of people are talking about that gentleman right over there. And he's been, he's been so great. He's been such a great advocate. I, I have to say, I don't, this is in a very positive way, Tim Scott. He has been much better for me than he was for himself. The one thing that always surprises me is that the VP choice has absolutely no impact. It's whoever the president is. So <laughs> it looks like Tim Scott getting a little hometown cooking there, Kaylee. Well, and that was the second time that Tim Scott was mentioned. He also, when he was on with Maria Bartiromo, brought up Tim Scott's name independently. And, and Senator Tim Scott is a name that was brought up by Democrat pollster, former Clinton pollster, Mark Penn, as someone who would be a good pick. So, yeah, that, that was really interesting, maybe an indicator. I know Trump likes to throw curveballs and point us in different directions and keep it going. We'll see who he chooses. There were a number of names on the short list. Vivek, your name was on there, as he mentioned. Um, but I thought it was interesting. Tim Scott is a great pick. A fantastic senator, someone with an optimistic tone, someone, when I talk about winning over those suburban moms, that's a name that I think can do it. Yeah, Vivek, I don't know if I should even ask you about VP. It's a conflict of interest <laughs> because you are an interested party. Uh, so I want to get your opinion on the president saying he doesn't even think Joe Biden will debate him. Listen. Well, you challenge him to a debate regularly on focus specific topics. In other words, so it's not a wide ranging, just one debate on foreign policy. Well, I'll do it right now on your show. I'll challenge him right now. And I, we can do you. You can do anybody you want. I, I'll take anybody from uh, CNN, which is doing very poorly in the ratings, by the way, as you probably know. I, I, I'll take anybody because I think you have an obligation in this case. You really have an obligation to debate. I don't think he's going to debate, though. I really don't think so. Vivek, would Joe Biden be able to get away with dodging a debate with former President Donald Trump? Look, I think that Joe Biden may not get away with even making it to the next three months as the nominee. So one reason he may not debate, Jesse, is that I think the Democrats are really setting up for a bait and switch here. 
I believe that this is predicted by a collective set of incentives. You see what the poll numbers are saying. You see the way they're now behaving towards Biden. Why is that documents case only coming out now? Why are you only hearing about Hunter Biden years later, taken seriously by the mainstream media? I think these are the breadcrumbs they are dropping to say that Biden is going to eventually going to be sidelined as the nominee. And I do think it's really important that our side not get lulled into the sense of complacency that we're in now. Yes, we're in a good position. Yes, I do think Donald Trump is going to be the next president of the United States. But the path to get there, I predict, I fear, is going to be far more complicated than just a straight line to defeating Joe Biden. I think that's what many in the Democratic establishment want us to think. And I think that that's why we need to own our own message, Jesse, such that whether it's Michelle Obama or Gavin Newsom or whichever other puppet they trot out, it doesn't matter because we own the message of national revival ourselves. That's why it's important to stand for our own agenda, not just criticize Biden, which is what I saw President Trump do tonight. And I think that's going to be a successful strategy. OK, dropping the Michelle Obama bomb on me, aren't we? Thanks, Vivek. Kaboom. <laughs> Kaylee, Vivek, thank you guys so much. Great points. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.